Assalamualaikum guys, this is Mr. Middlepath. So, continuing on part one, what I was saying. Basically, developing a natural relationship with Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala doesn't require these types of, of, of mind-altering substances. And I, as I mentioned before, it mimics the effect of, of spiritual growth, even though it's not, right? And I said that it has a deceptive nature and how it's insidious, meaning that it, it has a negative effect very subtly and gradually over time in such a way that you don't realize it right and that's the the that's the the main component of most of these drugs they become emotionally people become emo it binds to their identity and their perception of who they are and they become emotionally attached to it in such a way that you cannot logically convince them to leave those drugs behind because it, it, you can't argue with emotions so and there's a reason for that so the, scientifically the weed binds to the THC, the chemical component that gets you high, binds to your fat cells in your body. So, for example, someone does heroin, uh, the heroin is flushed out of your system in one day. But weed, it stays in your system for two months. So, people might not feel that... The, so, the withdrawal symptoms are, are mitigated. Because if, if you're not smoking weed that day, the THC is still in your body, it's still in your system. So, you're not really having that negative effect that you would have with other drugs because it's still there in your mind. So really, it takes about two months for it to flush out of your system. And in that time of two months is really the time that it takes after the two month period, after a three month period is when you really start seeing these change, the positive changes from quitting weed. I have seen people who have went to the psychiatric hospital and developed full blown uh, schizophrenia. I'm going to talk about that at the end of the video, but I also wanted to say that other people who think that weed is okay, they said they use the spiritual growth excuse, right? I hear that one a lot. They use the, the successful people excuse. So they say, oh, it's just a stereotype that potheads or people who smoke too much weed are not successful in life. And I've, I know X person that is successful because he smokes weed. And that's like me saying, my name, I'm Ahmed Maurer. I, I wear a black hat. Ahmed Maurer is a human being. Therefore, all human beings wear black hats. It's a stupid logical argument. It's like saying that person was successful because he smoked weed, not because of their hard work or their connections, right? So that person was successful despite the fact that they smoke weed. And I know people who are successful despite the fact that they smoke weed. And I tell them, it's like, this weed use is getting in the way, right? You don't really need it as a stress reliever. You could be actually being a lot more successful if you don't smoke weed, right? And most people though, most people who smoke weed are not successful, right? And they are bums. And this stereotype is not something that happened in America um, recently. This stereotype has existed for thousands of years. The stereotype of the lazy, bum, loser, pothead has existed for more than a thousand years, okay? Even in Islamic history, and I'll bet you even before that in other countries' history that people who eat too much hash had the same thing. I mean, if it was there in Islamic history, then I'm 99% I'm, I'm sure that in other cultures and other histories, you will see the weed use in the stories of the, of, of the, uh, of the mentally gone, uh, mentally unaware um, pothead who's not... Who, who's, who's in the dregs of society, right? So so this this stereotype is a very old stereotype, right? And there is there is a reason for that. There is a reason for that. So for example, people one of the side effects of of weed is paranoia, right? And paranoia people say, "Oh, I'm just paranoid because I'm weed is illegal where I live. I'm paranoid because of the police." But what they don't understand is the paranoia is actually a physical chemical effect from the marijuana itself and it will manif the paranoia is the symptom it will manifest itself in different ways depending on where you live in your culture so for example you might be paranoid because of you might be paranoid because of the police someone who's at home might be paranoid because his parents are going to come home if if he lives on his own and there is no parents that he has to worry about or, or police. He might be paranoid that the demons are out to get him or that the government is watching him or something, right? The paranoia will, will be there. It'll just express itself in a different way depending on the person's environment and uh, their upbringing, right? So in the beginning, right, smoking weed 
makes you feel really happy and doesn't really get in the way. Some people have bad trips, some people don't. But after about a year or two years, the weed use really catches up with the person and they're no longer the same person they are. Couch potato, not assertive, not standing up for their rights, right? So I have seen people, and now I'm going to go to the psych psychiatric hospital, but I know two people personally who have went to the psychiatric hospital because of their weed use combined with the stress of their life. So imagine smoking weed and you get high and you have a bad trip. Now imagine you have a bad trip, but you can't turn it off. Even after the high is gone, the bad trip remains. So imagine being high for like two or three months, but it's a bad high, it's a bad trip, and you can't turn it off. And that happens when someone's been smoking weed excessively too much. And, and at the same time, some stressful event happens in their life. So whether the weed was the trigger or the stressful event was the trigger, we don't really know. But when both of them combine, what happens is, some, is an interesting effect where the person loses their sense of reality and their grip of reality. And they kind of, for want of a better word, they lose their marbles, right? And they end up in the psychiatric hospital. And these people, they recover once the drug once the drugs are flushed out of their system in about two or three months but they're never really the same ever again and you wouldn't know it if you met them but i know it when i see them because i know them before they used to do it and i see them after they they do it and it's like a small little piece is gone and you'll never get it back but because the human brain can recover and because you you, you are trying to get better you're able to compensate for that effect such that someone who never met you wouldn't really know the difference. He'd think you're completely fine. But me who knew you before, I can tell that a small little piece of you, you just is a little bit off than how it used to be in the past. You know, maybe you're responding just a slight little bit slower maybe you're, you're, you're absent-minded just a little bit more than you used to be maybe you know a little bit a little bit is gone right and I have seen this too in the psychiatric hospital with people who aren't my friends that I've just seen uh, just lose it right stressful event happens plus the weed smoking and bam so now someone can say all right man mr. Middlepath was good man that's like for people who smoke way too much weed man but I just smoke it every now and then there's no such thing as smoking it every now and then because the weed lasts in your body for two months get it right all right Quit it completely. The weed lasts in your body for two months. It subtly and slowly ropes you in, right? Like a like a like a prostitute hooker with 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 bad diseases, with like STDs in her. And then you won't know you have the STDs until it's too late. So please guys, take advice from someone who's been around for a while, who's seen the effects that it has on people's lives. Probably probably the biggest red flag of weed is that unlike other drugs people know they have a problem when they have the problem right most people but with weed no one admits that they have a problem when their use becomes problematic when their when their drug when their weed use becomes problematic and it's not just weed use it's all psychedelic drugs mushrooms and acid weed and any drugs that has a mind altering effect on the person so these are my personal observations i would recommend you to quit for three months four months see the changes that happens in your life right you will know when you're ready to quit compare yourself playing sports normally compared to playing when you're high if you're really young like 15 16 you might not see a difference but I'm telling you go and observe people who are smoking weed a lot look at them in their late 20s right and think to yourself do I want to be like that guy that guy who smokes consistently observe him when he's high his performance when he's high versus when he's not high observe his performance uh, in work in life socially uh, his, his class his status and then if the person is successful and we do have certain people who are successful because um, they're able to control themselves ask yourselves were they successful because they smoked weed or are they a successful people who happens to smoke some weed and then look at that 
if they're successful, why are you copying the weed use from them? Why aren't you copying the habits that made them successful? So are you using their success as an excuse for yourself to smoke weed? Because that's not logical. Because if you wanted to copy their success, you would copy the things that made them successful, not their habits. That's like me going to uh, a genius who's good at mathematics, and instead of learning mathematics from him, I copy his, al he's, let's say the mathematician is an alcoholic. I say, oh, he's a smart mathematician. I want to be just like him. Instead of, Instead of learning the math from him and trying to be a good mathematician like him, I'm giving you an example, I go copy the alcohol use, right? It makes no sense for my personal growth, for my spiritual growth, for my self-development. You're Instead of taking the good and leaving the bad, you're taking the bad and you're leaving the good. Which is relative for some people, but I don't want to get into the philosophy of ethics and where do ethics come from and, and, and all of that. That's a story for another time. But inshallah, this, this gave you some perspective, right? And, and the Prophet Muhammad says it. Um, oh wait, hold on.